their years as a wandering tribe, the Aztec believed their destiny was to rule the world. Now, at the height of empire, Motecuzoma listened to his dreams and saw the signs. They foretold disaster. Then word came of strange happenings in the east, boats and men landing on the Mexican coast, men unlike any they had encountered before, their bodies sheathed in metal. Matekuzoma sent scouts to the coast to find out more about the new arrivals. They were very white. Their eyes were like chalk. Their hair, on some it was yellow and on some it was black. They wore long beards. They were yellow too. The strangers had landed on the Gulf Coast. That was also disturbing information. Centuries earlier, the banished priest from the cult of the Feathered Serpent, Quetzalcoatl, had left Mexico from the same coast, promising one day to return. Another prophecy that threatened Motecuzoma. If he comes in the year one read, he strikes at kings. It was now the Aztec year one read. Whether Motecuzoma believed the prophecy or not was of little importance. He knew that many subjugated people throughout the empire embraced the story of the feathered serpent and awaited his return. For it was in their hearts that he would come, that he would come to land to reclaim his kingdom. Whoever these invaders were, whether they represented Quetzalcoatl or a foreign power, Motecuzoma could feel the threat to his empire. And his fears were justified. Spanish conquistador Hernando Cortes had landed in Mexico. It was said that first he dreamt that Quetzalcoatl would return. After that, when he saw Hernán Cortes and the others, he thought, he has come. Quetzalcoatl has come. Only he was wrong. Another had come. Someone with evil intentions because Cortes did not come with religious faith or to do good things. He came to commit terrible crimes against the Mexica. As a diplomatic gesture, Motecuzoma sent emissaries carrying the costume of Quetzalcoatl, which they presented to Cortes aboard his ship. Cortes responded with a display of force. He ordered the Aztec delegation shackled and forced to watch as his men fired a Lombard cannon in a thunderous hail of fire and smoke, blowing apart a tree on shore. The astonished emissaries were released and they raced back to Tenochtitlan. Motecuzoma received the news with alarm. Spanish weapons and armor were formidable and it would be only a matter of time before tributary states chafing under the yoke of Aztec oppression would join the conquistador. They would lead him to the wealth that lay at the center of the empire, to the one thing Spanish conquistadors craved above all else. We Spanish suffer from a disease of the heart, which only gold can cure. Cortes ordered his 450-man army inland. When some of his men resisted, he sank his ships. There would be no turning back. The army moved relentlessly toward the valley of Mexico. As Motecuzoma had anticipated, Cortes formed alliances along the way with rebellious city-states. One tributary leader spoke for the fears of many. Motecuzoma and the Mexica have given us much pain. They have imposed a tribute upon us. They have become our rulers. If the Spaniards should abandon us in haste, if they should go, so perverse are the Mexica that they will kill us. 
While many nations lived in fear of the Aztec, one city-state less than 50 miles east of Tenochtitlan had never fallen to the empire. Tlaxcala. There, Cortes forged his key alliance. Six thousand Tlaxcalan troops joined the Spaniards. As reports reached the Aztec capital, some of Motecuzoma's advisors argued for a decisive military campaign. But Motecuzoma held his armies in check, unwilling to leave the capital unprotected or risk setting off a general rebellion. Stalling for time, he sent emissaries to protest Cortez's advance, and even had a wall of trees planted across the road to disguise the route to Tenochtitlan. Paralyzed with doubt, the emperor was fast becoming only a player in a prophecy being fulfilled. And he must have thought, these men, why have they come? What do they want? Maybe we can attack and kill some of them, but not all of them. For that reason, some did not want to fight. They had seen that if they shot arrows at them, they did not fall. They made a clanging sound as they bounced off their armor. Even if they fired at the horses, they did not die because the horses had armor. Motecuzoma's worst nightmare was about to reveal itself. Do the former rulers know what is happening in their absence? Oh, that any of them might see, might wonder at what has befallen me. At what I am seeing now, that they have gone, for I cannot be dreaming. <laughs> <laughs>